Guys, good morning. It is Thursday, November 18th, 2021, and the jury for the Rittenhouse trial is coming back today to reconvene and hopefully come to a decision, uh, guilty or innocent on the charges, the five charges he is still stuck with at this point in the trial. Uh, I'm just going to come right out and say this point blank. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The prosecution has failed in presenting this case to the jury. This is clearly cut and dry, a self-defense case. And in my opinion, the prosecution knows this. And multiple times they have now infringed on Mr. Rittenhouse's constitutional rights. And they are trying to desperately get a mistrial by the judge. I'm going to show you the moment when it happened, how the judge responded, and then how the media is framing this this morning or as of last night. And what I think is going to happen later today if the jury does come to a verdict. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Cue the speeder. Hey, you just said that on camera. This is going viral. Guys, thank you so much for crushing it and getting me to 1,000 subscribers. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, this is the way. So guys, I should probably preface everything I'm about to say by telling you my position. If I was ever to be put in a situation like Kyle Rittenhouse was on the night of August 26th, 2020, if those gentlemen had attacked me after I was trying to flee the scene and get away from them, I stumbled and fell and was swarmed upon by individuals like this they would be fixing to catch an l uh, and some lead i would not put up with this behavior uh, no way no how so going forward everything i say i guess you'd have to understand where i'm coming from and i just want to put that out there uh, before we dive into the subject i'm going to show you the point in the trial when the prosecution was asking for a mistrial without asking. And I'll show you the exact moment that the judge, I think, realized it. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but we can. All right, enough of me. Roll the film. Yes, and you'd agree with me that you're not allowed to use deadly force to protect property, correct? Yes. But yet you have previously indicated that you wished you had your AR-15 to protect someone's property, correct? I'm going to, uh... Uh, I'm going to ask you to go into the library uh, again for a moment. So earlier in the day, just for context, before the trial started, the prosecution and defense uh, went to the judge and the prosecution was thinking about putting this line of questioning uh, into his cross-examination of Cal Rittenhouse. And the judge said that his ruling that was previously made before the trial started that this line of questioning was not admissible. They weren't going to be able to do it. So the prosecutor, Binger, totally ignores that request made by the judge and goes ahead and just asks him the question anyways after it had been discussed earlier and clearly stated that this line of questioning was not going to be allowed in front of the jury. And, and so the judge has just asked the jury to leave the room and he is about to scold uh, prosecutor Binger and watch what happens. or attempting to provoke a mistrial in this matter. He knows he can't go into this, and he's asking the questions. I ask the court to strongly admonish him, and the next time it happens, I'll be asking for a mistrial with prejudice. He's an First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that, and the court left the door open. Okay, so just so you know, if someone's asking for a mistrial with prejudice, that means the judge will call a mistrial and the defendant can no longer be charged with any of the crimes that he has been charged with in this case. I would have to be thrown out. He would not be able to be put on trial again for any of these charges because, and well, you'll see why. This for me, not for you. My understanding of you your... should have come and asked. I was 
was astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. Finger a new uh, one. Yeah. So like a browbeaten puppy, Schroeder just took Binger behind the woodshed and gave him a beating. Now, why is this such a big deal? Because the Constitution states, and this is why you are read your Miranda rights when you are arrested, that you have the right to remain silent because anything you say after you are read your Miranda rights can be used against you in the court of law. Now, as the judge stated, this has been around for 40 or 50 years, your right to remain silent. And this is something that would not slip the mind of a veteran prosecutor like Binger. He knows better, but if you notice at this point right here, and I'm going to play it one more time. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So at that point, I believe the judge realized that Binger's looking to get a mistrial here. He's looking for a mistrial. He knows he's lost the case. He's lost the jury. Now he's lost in the court of public opinion because the truth has come out uh, and everyone's retracting their statements now from Anna Kasparian down the line. I think at this point, the judge realized the only way Binger's not going to catch an L is if he gets a mistrial. Rittenhouse's attorney step in. They say, Your Honor, we'd like to have a mistrial. We're prejudiced. And to his credit, the judge could have at that point called the mistrial with prejudice and Cow would walk. But I think this judge wants the case to go to the jury and he wants the jury to come back with a decision because I don't think he wants all of that pressure on him in order to call a mistrial. And the reason I'm making this video and it worries me is because the fact that the prosecution was so brazen to twice now in this cross-examination go against the judge's ruling and to violate the rights of Mr. R uh, Rittenhouse. I said it couldn't come in, and it isn't coming in. No matter what you think. Number two, I, I, I have to be concerned that with what Mr. Richards has said about the, the, the progress of the trial, and, and um, when, when you were way, well, I said you were over the line, in, uh, close to, or over the line on commenting on the defendant's pretrial silence, which is a well-known rule. I, 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 I'm astonished that that would have been an issue. So I don't want to have another issue as long as this case continues. Is that clear? It is. Thank you. So, again, the judge there in the back of his mind is saying, this mother, he's trying to get a mistrial. And here's my biggest issue that I take with this. The judge is pandering because of the mob. He's mentioned many times during the case, I've listened to just about every minute of the courtroom testimony. The judge has repeatedly talked about the scrutiny he's receiving with the media and online, but the judge, I believe, really wants the jury to just come back with a not guilty verdict, and then he can put it on the jury. If you are afraid of the mob and constitutional law no longer rules as the law of the land, out of fear, we got major problems going forward. It's not just Cal Rittenhouse on trial. Every freedom-loving American pretty much is on trial right now. If the prosecution can get away with things like this, think about how many times they must have done this in the past when there's no one watching. The whole world is watching, and they tried to pull this stunt. Think about how many people have been put away because their constitutional rights had been violated by the prosecution or the defense. It's extremely frightening. And I'll leave you guys with this because I got to get ready for work. The Constitution is the one document that every U.S. citizen has to protect them 
from things like this happening. And once you give in to the mob and the Constitution no longer is the law of the land, we have problems. This. No matter what you think about Kyle Rittenhouse on, as a person, I can't tell what's going on inside his head. I don't know what his motivations are. But everything I've seen so far in the trial has looked like self-defense to me. And I think that the defense has proved that. The prosecution has failed. And when we get to the point when the mob is allowed to rule over the law of the land, which is the constitution that binds every single one of us, no matter if we're black, white, fat, skinny, Democrat, Republican, smart, dumb, whatever the case may be, it's the one thing that we have that binds all of us and protects us and gives us those unalienable rights that we are allowed and that keep us free. All right, guys, I got to run and get in the shower and head to work. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know I appreciate each and every one of you who continue to support this channel and the community. Thanks to each and every one of you. This is the United States. I'm the Massalorian, and I'm out. <laughs>